Hello everyone and welcome back once again. This is your history teacher here and this time I am here with a new chapter of NCRT grade 7 history that is towns, traders and craftsperson. Students, during the medieval period there were different towns with different functions such as temple towns, administrative centers, commercial towns that were famous for arts and crafts or port towns and students all these towns represented the process of urbanization during the medieval period and students after the 8th century many small towns emerged out of large villages in the whole subcontinent and tax and the zamindari system developed during this period and students not only this in fact the extensive trade was carried out with the ports of the red sea persian gulf east africa southeast asia china etc and the products in turn reached different european markets and thus due to it the european traders were drawn to india and students the arrival of the european traders in india changed the whole scenario of the trading and towns of India. So students, in your this chapter, we are going to deal with different crafts like bidri, weaving, cotton cleaning, spinning and dyeing developed and the architecture included temples, palaces, tanks, reservoirs, etc. And students, lastly, we will also discuss case study or some places like Hampi, Surat, Masulipatnam, etc. So, let's start. Students, in the medieval times, means between the 8th and the 18th centuries, there were temple towns, administrative towns, commercial towns that were famous for arts and crafts and port towns also. Students, moreover, some big towns and cities were famous for more than one of those things. As the first one here, the administrative centers. Students, Thanjavur was the capital of Chola. And students, this Thanjavur situated on the bank of river Kaveri in Tamil Nadu. And students, as I said, that it was the capital of Chola dynasty a thousand years ago. And students, that time means to say during the medieval period, this Thanjavur was a busy commercial town with market for grains, spices, clothes and jewelry. And water was supplied to its people and visitors from big wells and tanks. And students, here in Thanjavur, there was a temple named Raja Rajeshwara Temple that was built by the then ruler Raja Raja Chola and students this temple Raja Rajeshwara was built by an architect named Kunjarmalan Raja Raja Peruntachan and students how we can say that that this architect had designed this temple students the historians came to know that because in the inside of this temple the name of the architect was carved out and students in this temple there is a massive shivlinga inside the temple and beside the temples there are palaces with mandapas or pavilions that were used by the kings to hold courts and carry out their administrative affairs and students not only this in fact these mandapas or pavilions were also used as prayer halls and some even housed religious dancing and music concerts. And students, as I said, that these mandapas or the pavilions are the places where the kings used to hold their courts. And it is the place from where the king issue orders to their subordinates. And students, that time there is a community of weavers called Salia weavers of Thanjaur produce cloth for flags that to be pursued 
in the temple festival and students that time the fine cotton was produced for the king and nobles whereas the coarse cotton was used for the masses means to say for the rest of the common people and students during this period some distance away from tanjavur there was a place called savi malai which was famous for satpatis means to say the sculptors who make sculpture and students these sculptor make bronze idol and tall ornamental bell or metal lamps now students the second topic of your this chapter is temple towns and pilgrimage center students tanjavur is also an example of a temple town where urbanization means the process by which cities grows happened as temples became central to society and economy and that's why we can say tanjavur is also an example of a temple town and students we can also say that that temples were built by rulers not only to show their devotion but also to unify different communities and students they were maintained through cash and land grants from rulers and merchants as well as from the donations made by the pilgrims and students as i said that temples were built by rulers not only to show their devotion but also to unify different communities so that's why the rulers carry out the elaborate rituals feed pilgrims and priest celebrate main festivals around these temples and students all the donations that were donated by the pilgrims were used by the temple authorities to finance trade and banking and students do you know why these temple towns grew because large number of priest workers artisans traders etc settle near the temple in order to cater to its need and those of the pilgrims and that's why such kind of cities emerge out as a temple towns yes, students as i said that there were many cities that grew and emerges as temple towns for example bhilla swamin that were also known as bhilsa or vidisha in madhya pradesh in the same way somnath in gujarat and kanchipuram and madurai in tamil nadu and tirupati in andhra pradesh students similarly many pilgrimage center also grew into the towns for example like vrindavan in uttar pradesh and tiruvannamalai in tamil nadu in the same way ajmer of rajasthan grew as a pilgrimage center or we can say a temple towns during the 12th century when it was the capital of chahan kings but students later this ajmer became the suba headquarters under the mughals but students the mughals didn't harm the religious sentiments of others and provide an excellent example of religious coexistence as for an example the khwaja muhyiddin chishti celebrated the sufi sant settled there in ajmer in 12th century that attracted the muslim devotees from all over the subcontinent now students the next topic of your this chapter is a network of small towns students after the 8th century many small towns emerge out of large villages all over the indian subcontinent and students these towns had mandapikas means to say mandi where the nearby villages brought their agriculture produce to sell and in fact students 
they also had a certain kind of street markets called hart students do you know what is hart students hart is generally a kind of a street market where the shopkeepers lined with shops and there were streets for different kind of artisans such as potters oil pressers sugar makers toddy makers smiths stone masons and so on students as i said that these are the places means to say mandapika or hearts were the places where villagers generally came to set up to sell their agriculture produce horses salt camphor saffron betel nut and spices like pepper and students later as soon as these markets grew then the samantas means to say zamindar or the landlords started to build forts around these large villages and turn them into developing towns and students do you know why the zamindar or the samantas started to build forts around these large villages students they do so because in order to leave taxes on traders artisans and the articles of the trade and in fact students sometimes these zamindars also leave taxes on the donations that were made by the pilgrims to the local temples and students how we can say that because the temples that survived from the ancient times to till date have recorded many inscriptions that give us the evidences of all these things now students let's learn and discuss about some big and small traders students there were different kind of traders in the medieval times including the banjaras means to say the nomadic people and traders who traveled a lot came together to form traders association or we can say guilds and students do you know why the traders forms their association or guilds students the traders forms their association or guilds in order to protect their interest students the most famous ones being mani gramam and nana desai and students these traders association or guilds traded extensively not only within india in fact within southeast asia and china as well and students during the medieval period the largest indian trading groups were the chetiyas and marwadi oswal and gujarati traders such as hindu banias and muslim bohras and students these gujarati traders including the hindu banias and the muslim bohras traded extensively with the ports of the red sea persian gulf east africa southeast asia and china and generally these gujarati traders means to say hindu banias and the muslim bohras sold textile and spices in these ports and students in exchange of it these traders brought gold and ivory from africa and spices tin chinese blue pottery and silver from southeast asia and china whereas the towns that were on the west coast were home to arab persian chinese jewish syrian christian traders and students the indian spices and the cloth were sold in the red sea ports and from here means to say from the red sea ports these indian spices and clothes were purchased by the italian traders and eventually many of these products also reached european markets and this attracted european traders to india and slowly and gradually the indian spices became an important part of the european cooking and cloth eventually drew european traders to india and that's how 
their arrival once again changed the structure of trading in towns in india now students the next topic of your this chapter is crafts in town students the inlay work in copper and silver done by the craft person of bidar students bidar is a district in north east karnataka and it became very famous and came to be called bidri from bidar in the same way panchalas or the vishwakarma community consist of many goldsmiths bronze smiths black smiths masons and carpenters and students all these different kind of artisans were very essential for the building of temples and students not only building of temples in fact these artisans also played an important role in the construction of palaces big buildings tanks reservoirs etc in the same way like the panchalas or the vishwakarma community there were another community also that is saliar or kakolar community and students these saliar and kakolar communities were of weavers community and students these weavers communities emerged as prosperous communities amongst the all other communities and students these weavers communities became that much rich that they made donations to temples and students do you know how they became so rich community because of the cloth making like cotton cleaning the spinning and dyeing that became very specialized during medieval period and that's how these communities became so prosperous students as i said earlier in the starting of the chapter that at the last we will discuss case study of some places and that are hampi masuli patnam and surat so the first one is hampi the students this hampi is a village in northern karnataka and it was located in the ruins of the city of vijayanagar that was once the capital of the vijayanagar empire that was founded in 1336 and students by archaeological findings we know that the city was well fortified but no cementing material was used for binding the bricks or stones rather they were wedged together by interlocking pattern and students the architectural style of hampi was distinctive that's make it different from rest of the architectural style of india and here in hampi the buildings in the royal complex has splendid arcs domes and pillared halls with niches for holding sculptures and students in fact not only this well planned arches and pleasure gardens with sculptural motifs such as the lotus and corbels are also constructed here in hampi students in 15th and 16th centuries this hampi grew up with commercial and cultural activities and the market consisted of traders such as moors a name that was used for muslim merchants and not only this in fact the chetis and the portuguese traders too and students that time means to say between the 15th and 16th centuries there was a certain kind of tradition here in hampi and that is the devdasis traditions means to say the temple dancers who performed dance before the deity royalty and masses in the many pillared hall in the virupaksha means to say a form of shiva and students the cultural activities included celebration of various festivals such as mahanavmi festival that we know as navratri in the south was one of the most important festivals celebrated at hampi and that time the temples became the center for not only worship but also for the development of various religious and cultural traditions such as that of devdasis that we discussed earlier and students during their survey 
the archaeologists also found mahanomi platform where the kings generally received guests and accepted tributes from the subordinate chiefs and the subordinate chiefs and kings also watched dance and music performance and not only this in fact they also enjoyed the wrestling bouts but students in spite of all these developments hampi the culture capital started deteriorating after the fall of the vijayanagar empire as it was defeated by the deccani sultans who were the rulers of the golconda bijapur ahmednagar berar and Bidar, and that's how such a highly flourished hampi fell down. Now, students, the next case study is about Surat, also known as a gateway to the West. Students, the city of Surat was cosmopolitan, as people of all castes and creeds lived there. And students, during the Mughal period, Surat, Kambe, that we know as Khambat in present time. and later ahmedabad carried out trade with west asia via through the gulf of ormuz and students it was also called the gateway of makka or we can say the gate to makka because as the pilgrim ships set sail from here students later in the 17th century the portuguese the dutch and the english set up their factories and warehouses in surat and students do you know why because that time the textile industry of surat has been famous for its zari work and has a market in west asia africa and europe that's why many portuguese dutch and english had set up their factories and warehouses at surat and students according to a english chronicler ovington who wrote an account of the port in 1689 and students ovington wrote in her account that on an average a hundred ships of different countries could be found anchored at the surat port and there were several retail and wholesale shops selling cotton textiles there means surat the students the next case study is about Masuli Patna, or we can say Machli Patna. Students, the town of Masuli Patna is located on the bank of River Krishna, and in the 17th century, the English and the Dutch East India Companies tried to control the town as it became the most important part of the coast near Andhra Pradesh. And students, the Kutub Sahib rulers of Golconda imposed royal monopolies. on the sale of the textiles spices and other items to prevent the trade from passing completely into the hands of the various east india companies but students as i said that the golconda rulers establish royal monopolies on the sale of the textiles spices etc in order to prevent the various east india companies to control them completely but students due to this competition between golconda nobles persian merchants telugu komati chettis and european traders made the city populous and prosperous and later in 17th century the moguls started extending their powers to golconda and 1686 to 1687 the mughal emperor aurangzeb conquered golconda thus the east india companies then devised a new policy which described that the new trading centers should combine the political administrative and commercial roles but students as soon as the company traders moved to bombay calcutta that we know as kolkata in present time and madras that we know as chennai in present time then masuli patnam lost both is merchants as well as prosperity and that's how masuli patnam declined in the course of the 18th century and today now it is a dilapidated little town now students the last topic of your this chapter is new towns and traders 
students in the 16th and 17th centuries the english the dutch and the french form east india companies in order to expand their commercial activities in the east and students do you know why students they expand their commercial activity in the east for spices and textiles and initially they faced a resistance from the local traders but the companies soon gained control over the sea routes and forced the local traders to be their agents and emerged as the commercial and political superpower of the subcontinent and students as i said that they initially faced a resistance from the local traders such as mulla abdul ghafur and virji vora were such traders who gave a tough resistance to these east india companies but students in spite of tough resistance the indian traders lose their control over trade and do you know why because the european companies use their naval power to gain control of the sea trade and students in fact they force indian traders to work as their agent and students the demand of goods like textile increased and so the crafts of spinning weaving bleaching dyeing etc expanded greatly as many people participated in it and the quality of the textile improved that's make more and more people taking them up students during this period indian textile designs became increasingly refined but this period saw the decline of the independence of the craft person as they now begin to work on a system of advance payments which meant that they had to weave cloth which was already promised to european agents and students further the weavers no longer had the liberty of selling their own cloth or weaving their own patterns students the 18th century saw the rise of bombay calcutta and madras which are the major metropolitan cities of today's student these cities rose up just because due to the industrialization students the craft and commerce also underwent changes as the local native artisans and merchants were moved to the black towns means to say the areas set up by the whites for the black or the local people the students the white peoples occupied the superior residence of port st george in madras or fort st william in calcutta now students that's all about your chapter number 6 and with this topic here your chapter number 6 is completed now i will be come back soon with another chapter till then stay home stay safe and stay healthy